Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We head straight to our second conversation where we have G.D. Johnson, who's on standby. And of course, he will be part of this conversation. We're looking at nation building. Now, the overall goal of nation building is to ensure that there's growth, development, and unity amongst the people via government policies. We'll also be looking at, you know, uh, how far we have fed as a country. I mean, from 1999 up until this point, uh, with emphasis uh, on the president, Mohammed uh, Buhari's led administration. Uh, Jide Johnson? It's good to have you join us this morning. Let's see. And good morning, Justin. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning, okay. Mr. Johnson. So, so let's head straight to the crux of it. Now, looking at our country, the way we are, the policies of government across the board, do you think that uh, government policies as regards the economy, uh, maybe we we'll start with the economy, all right? Government's policies as regards the economy, it's fostering a unity, it's encouraging growth amongst the Nigerian people. Yeah. Uh, uh, public policies are the trust that you used to build a nation, instill confidence in the people, and then um, encourage foreign direct investment in, in your economy. And um, if, as a nation, you don't have a consistent, coherent public policies with respect to your economy, with respect to your aviation sector, with respect to your infrastructure, with respect to, to your tourism, with respect to the way you structure your entire society, then uh, there's no way you can build you can build your you can build your nation. And that has been one of the challenges of the present administration and it has been one of the major challenges facing us as a nation across that state of the Federation, including the federal capital and territory, because we don't have continuity in policy, that's one. Then two, we don't have a national trust. If I ask you, what is the national trust of our economy? What is the national trust of our polity? And then, then nobody seems to have an idea with respect to what are we building our economy on our economy on. For example, in the 1960s, our economy was built on agriculture. That's why you have the, the granite pyramids in the north, and you have the cocoa house in the southwest, then you have the palm kernel and the rest of it in the in the south in the south in the southeast so then we discovered oil in the early 60s and then that formed the base upon which we build our economy and since we have seen a global trend in when there's a diversification to renewable energy the price of oil products are falling and people are no longer interested in making use of crude oil and you ask yourself this question, what are we building our economy on? Because it is the economy that shapes the totality of what your public policy is. If you don't have the resources to, to run your government, to run your nation, then you just be planning on paper without having any resources for, for execution. Now, others have, have diversified the economy. They have moved from product-based economy to, to and if they are treated types of economy which has existed in the world. One, you have commodity-based economy. When people are beginning to exchange commodities, you sell your farm produce, I sell my farm produce. Then we have the industrial age, which was based on product-based economy. Now, we are operating in an information-based economy. And that's why companies like like, um, like Twitter, like um, <clears throat> Google and the rest of it, they will be richer than even most African African country because the trust of the economy presently is information based. How have we equipped ourselves to meet up with the challenges and realities of current times? So that's that's just that's just the challenge we have with our public policy. If I ask you, I'll just I'll, 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 I'll put a stop to it so that you can ask your next question. All what right, is our public right. policy concerning education? What is our public policy concerning technology? What is our public policy concerning the medical industry? All right, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, I'm glad we started with, with the economy. Let's stay with that for a bit. Uh, because right now, when we talk about the economy, the average man on the street, what he is concerned about is uh, being able to go to the market with a little uh, that he earns and uh, uh, being able to afford um, the basic necessity, the staples, and um, of course, uh, go back home and um, make sure that um, his um, household, you know, 
you know, get something to eat. But right now, that's seemingly not the case in Nigeria with the bited, you know, uh, inflation. And uh, of course, uh, is actually food-based um, inflation right now, double digits. That's what we find ourselves grappling with. Is it a thing of um, bad um, economic managers or a thing of uh, we don't even know just how to, you know, or the, what direction to move so that we can ensure that Nigerians um, don't suffer from um, food insecurity? Yeah, there are a lot of factors that are responsible for that. Uh, don't forget the disruption of COVID-19. The disruption of COVID-19. Um, globally, virtually every nation in the world is facing inflation. No doubt about that. As a result of that disruption, um, you know, everything was collapsed for six, seven, eight, nine months. Nobody was going. Um, productions were not taking place. The economy was on a shutdown because there is a lockdown. That itself has its own implication. But the question you ask is, what are the policies that we put in place to address the disruption of COVID-19 as a nation, as a state? Well, that's another issue for 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 another for another time. And so, when you look at that at the global level, that's a factor. But at at the national level, don't forget the disruptions we have had. We're dealing with issues of security, dealing with the issue of security, dealing with the issues of elders, farmers clash which government has not been able to address, and the issue of kidnapping and the issue of banditry. Now, you know, Nigeria is still an agro-based economy. Over 60% of people that are employed in Nigeria are employed in the, in the agricultural sector of the Nigerian economy. Most of the people living in the rural area, in fact, there are no industries again in Nigeria. We are the industries. All the industries have gone. All the industries have gone to neighboring countries. They've gone to Ghana. They've gone to Rwanda. They've gone to countries where you have constant power supply, 247 power supply, because you cannot sustain an industrial-based economy without having constant power supply. So as an agro-based economy, you have this disruption caused by insecurity, banditry, kidnapping, and the rest of it. And then and the, the, the farmers' elders clashes over, over land and the rest of it. And the government did not take any concrete step to address it. So we knew quite all right that food supply in, 20, in 2021, we'll be, be under severe food shortage. And then we know moving to 2022, we have a situation whereby you have too much money running after fewer goods. So definitely that itself created the inflation which you are which are which you are talking, which you are talking, which you are talking about. Now, how do we address the information? Is it by giving more money back to the people? Now, government, government is coming up with the policy. One, they are removing the tariff. They have removed some of the, 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 the uh, they are removing subsidy. I don't even know whether there is subsidy in the first instance. And government is saying that, you know what we are going to do? We are going to give money back to the people. We are going to give 40 million poor Nigerians, 5,000. The question you ask is, how did they identify those 40 million back from Nigeria? We are taking money from one hand. You say you don't want to subsidize, and then you are giving back money back to the economy. And the economy has not have enough produce to deal with that. So you have inflation. So we should be we should brace up ourselves for the challenges of 2022, in the sense that some of the policies of government have not been designed to address some of the dangers that we are seeing ahead of time. The price of goods will go up. There's no doubt about that. The price of goods will go up. The prices of um, commodity will go up. The prices of whatever products and services that we need will go up. I've asked several times that all we need to do is to go to the marketplace and do a commodity price index. Just do your survey and do a week-by-week -week analysis. You will discover that things are getting higher and government is not taking... I, let's, let's narrow it down. Who is the economic advisor to this administration? Who is the economic advisor to this administration? How often do we see the economic advisor to this administration coming out to explain government policy to us? How? Who, 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 who is Minister for Economic Planning, a budget plan and economic development? Now, I saw two, two days ago where the Minister of Labor, um, Festus Keyamu, senior advocate of Nigeria, um, said that the beneficiaries of the 774,000 um, people that have been employed under the National um, Bureau of Employment, or not. There's, a, there's an agency for that. I can't recall the agency now. Mm -hmm. That they've paid them. And you ask yourself this question. All you need to do is to go into your neighborhood 
I'm on top of my own board. I'm on top of my local government. I knew the actors and players in my local government. I've not seen any beneficiary of what they have seen. And that's why my own, our own rule as the watchdog that old government accountable comes in. If, got, if the minister said that, you know, 774,000 Nigerians have benefited from this scheme, but 774, give us the testimony. Let's see, let's see the testimonials. Let's see the people that have benefited, benefited from. So this government has run its policy by, in, by injecting money into the economy, not by stimulating economic growth, by providing uh, palliatives for people that operate in the industrial sector, for people that operate their business for small scale and medium scale enterprise. But this government believes in sharing money. You recall the trader money towards 2020, 2019 election. And we said that government does not need to go to the marketplace and start sharing money. Because if you share money, you will create inflation. When you have too much money pursuing few, fewer goods, you create inflation. And that's the and that's and that's why all of us are facing the challenges, the challenges now of dealing with this uh, inflation that has eaten deep into into our pocket. We have the money, but the money cannot buy the goods because there are fewer goods and there are too much money. Okay, so let's also, um, you know, still stay with the economy. Now, one of the major concerns of uh, the Nigerian economy is the fact that we're very dependent on crude oil for our earnings. And, you know, uh, you want to look at the percentage. It has become a, a big problem. The issue of diversification of our economy has been a message that we have preached from 1960 up until this moment. We've also had several, um, you know, takeoff or development plans from 1966. And we seem not to be getting it. We're highly dependent on, um, you know, crude oil for our earnings. Are you aware of any policy of government, you know, trying to, any policy to ensure that we diversify our economy and not highly dependent on crude for earnings? Well, um, let's look at it. Even the crude oil, we are exporting to other country. And then you are importing back to your own country. You, we, we know we export the crude oil. So in the crude form, look at look at the time. It shows that we are crude in our thinking. It shows that our policies are crude. It shows that those that are managing us are crude in their thinking, are crude in their perspective, and are crude in their approach to public governance. We call it crude oil. The oil is not even processed. So we sell the crude oil, and then we buy refined products, and then we... We, we are the producer of the products as theirs, and then we sell to foreign countries, and they determine the price. They determine the price they buy the crude oil, and they determine the price they sell the refined products back to us. Now, one of the trusts of this present administration is that they are going to put the refinery in place. To put the refinery in place, we are the refinery. Now, even if you want to diversify the economy, and we can't diversify the economy, you maximize the advantage which you have over a particular product. It is called the law of comparative advantage in international trade. You maximize your own advantage. Have we maximized the advantage we have over the production of crude oil? We have not maximized that advantage because we are not processing the crude oil to, to, to produce kerosene, to produce um, um, gasoline, to produce um, diesel, to produce AGOs that they use to fly jets. To, to get by products from it, petrochemical products like bitumen and the rest of it from it. We have not done that. All we do is to export the crude and import the petroleum products and pay more money. So we are the mercy. We are as we should be the one dictating the price. The, those that are buying the crude oil determines the price they are going to buy the crude oil for us because we are crude in our thinking. And they also determine the price that they are going to sell um, the refined products the refined products to us. So for moving forward, one, we have to maximize our advantage, our comparative advantage. We need to put the refinery in place. These are the challenges we should be putting forward to whoever is aspiring to be the president in 2023. What will be your policy trust? We hold them accountable to that, to put the refinery in place. Once we put the refinery in place, we can refine the product. At least we maximize our own advantage. We save a lot of cost, and those costs that we save in the production and the production of petroleum products will be used to diversify the economy. Once we do that, we are, we are on board. Now, we are talking about diversifying the economy. I'm coming. Now, we need to improve our security. There's an area in which we can make money. It's tourism. Nigeria 
Nigeria is a beautiful country. There are a lot of landscape. All you need to do is to travel through the length and breadth of Nigeria. Where does Dubai make its money from? United Arab Emirates made their money from tourism. Countries of the world advertise their country for people to come to tourism. Where does Mauritius make its money from? Seychelles and the rest of them. They made their money from tourism. And then just look at the landscape, the topography, and the natural endowments that we have as a nation. Just imagine if we increase tourism. And when people talk about security, I'll give you this challenge. All you need to do is to go to an international airport. Look at the people that are going on and look at the people that are coming in. If there are no opportunities, you just look at their pigmentation and look at their coloration. You discover that Africans are going up, and then people that are light skin are coming back to Nigeria. It tells you about their opportunities. But if our eyes are close to our opportunities for us to maximize those opportunities, then we'll be faced with challenges. So if we don't improve the issue of security, we can never tap into tourism. And it's important for us to tap into tourism because it's a gold mine. Even Saudi Arabia, I listened to a clip on Saudi Arabia. Even Saudi Arabia have opened up their economy and they are targeting making their getting 10% of their gross domestic product, gross domestic product from tourism. Because they saw what United Arab Emirates did, they saw what Qatar and the rest of them did in the Middle East. And when people talk about religion, these are Islamic countries. See how they have opened up their countries and they are they are getting foreign direct investment through tourism to their own economy. So what are we doing as a nation to tap into that? So tourism is an area in which we can explore. And we can only explore that if we deal with the issue of security, banditry, kidnapping, and the rest. And we provide the basic infrastructure. What are the basic infrastructure? The road network, the railway system, our aviation sector. Not that you want to travel to Abuja and your flight is delayed for six hours without any explanation. And when you are late for 15 minutes, this same airline that delayed you for six hours will not give you any opportunity to embark on the plane because you got there 30 minutes before takeoff. So there are things that we need, best prices, best practices that we need to embrace in order for us to grow this economy. And it has to do with our policies, the policy maker. And if you don't put those policies in place, you can never have good governance. All right, uh, G. Day Johnson, uh, I'm afraid uh, time is never your friend uh, when you have so many salient things to talk about. Uh, but then again, I just want to put a chip in the word in um, edgewise. You know, looking at uh, uh, Nigeria's uh, security, you know, that's what made them um, the front page of um, the most headlines are uh, with the sea, uh, the correctional uh, services, uh, you know, attack in Jos, uh, policemen killed uh, in um, Ebony State, abducted victims, uh, escape as NAV jet raids bandits. You know, but the, the challenge for me right now is that um, on a very, on a daily basis, that's what we wake up to here. You know, just what are we supposed to be doing in the shortest possible time so at least we can go to bed with both eyes closed? Old people are accountable. Sack people. Sack the security chiefs you have put in place at the state level, at the local government level. We have not seen a police commissioner being sacked. We have not seen um, a director of DSS being sacked. We have not seen the service. We must have an holistic approach where you hold people that have given responsibility to be accountable. What is what is the responsibility? The responsibility is the ability to respond to issues. So. The word responsibility is a combination of the word response and ability. Now, when you talk about accountability, you talk about account table and ability. Now, bring your account to the table. When you bring your account to the table, we'll be able to determine whether you have the ability to handle the, the responsibility that we have given to you or not. Now, you ask yourself, who is the police commissioner for those states that you have those infractions? Have they been sacked? Have they been queried? You know, it's because you don't you don't hold people accountable. Just, just in our hand with this. Just imagine you not coming to the studio to present this program for two, three days, or you are coming late regularly. What will have happened to you? Oh, Mercy, I'm sad. doing it to you as well. What will have happened to you? Imagine the cameraman not coming. Imagine the follow manager not coming. And this is the situation when you make this, when you throw simple analogy into it, it is the failure of people that have been given responsibility to do. And if they fail to do the responsibility, you hold them accountable. All but right. we live in a society right. whereby we live, we, we don't hold people accountable, we do things on the basis of sentiment, and sentiment cannot lead you to progress. We must do things right. And for us to do things right, we must hold people accountable. All right. Fire Thank them. you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we guard them.
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. G.D. Johnson. He is the Chief um, Lecturer at Nigeria Institute of um, Journalism. And we have, looking, we have been looking at the state of the nation and, of course, the economy, security, and all of that. Thank you for your uh, inputs this morning, uh, G.D. Johnson. Yeah, thank you, Justin, and thank you, Messi. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, many thanks. We look forward to having uh, more conversation with you. Uh, this is where we call it a wrap. Thank you so much. We hope you had a great time two hours of the conversation. We will definitely come through tomorrow. And if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa. And on YouTube, is at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Do have a great morning. And I'm Justin. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.